Greetings YouTube. Today let's talk about healthcare in Canada. Healthcare in Canada is funded and delivered through a publicly funded healthcare system with most services provided by private entities. Healthcare spending in Canada is projected to reach $160 billion or 10.6% of GDP in 2007. This is slightly above the average for OECD countries. In Canada, the various levels of government pay for about 71% of Canadians' health care costs, which is slightly below the OECD average. Under the terms of the Canada Health Act, the publicly funded insurance plans are required to pay for medically necessary care, but only if it is delivered in hospitals or by physicians. There is considerable variation across the provinces slash territories as to the extent to which such costs as outpatient prescription drugs, physical therapy, long-term care, home care, dental care and even ambulance services are covered. Considerable attention has been focused on two issues, wait times and health human resources. There is also a debate about the appropriate public-private mix for both financing and delivering services. Canada's health care spending is expected to reach $171.9 billion, or $5,170 per person, in 2008. Health expenditures are expected to be 10.7% of the gross domestic product. Hospitals account for the largest segment in spending at $48.1 billion, however, this amount is declining. According to the OECD, spending was second amongst other countries, less than United States and more than Norway, Switzerland and Luxembourg. Canada has a federally sponsored, publicly funded Medicare system, with most services provided by the private sector. Each province may opt out, though none currently do. Canada's system is known as a single-payer system, where basic services are provided by private doctors. Since 2002 they have been allowed to incorporate, with the entire fee paid for by the government at the same rate. Most family doctors receive a fee per visit. These rates are negotiated between the provincial governments and the province's medical associations, usually on an annual basis. A physician cannot charge a fee for a service that is higher than the negotiated rate, even to patients who are not covered by the publicly funded system, unless the physician opts out of billing the publicly funded system altogether. Pharmaceutical costs are set at a global median by government price controls. Other areas of health care, such as dentistry and optometry, are wholly private. The 20th century saw the discovery of insulin by Frederick Benting and his colleagues, Charles Best, J.J. R. McLeod, and J.B. Kalip in 1922. For this, Frederick Benting and J.J. R. McLeod of the University of Toronto won the 1923 Nobel Prize in Physiology and Medicine 8. Dr. Wilder Penfield, who discovered a successful surgical treatment for epilepsy called the Montreal Procedure, founded the Montreal Neurological Institute in 1934. The early 20th century saw the first widespread construction of government run hospitals, mainly asylums for the mentally ill and sanatoriums for those suffering from tuberculosis. Calls for increased government involvement also became common, and the idea of a national health insurance system had considerable popularity. William Lyon Mackenzie King promised to introduce such a scheme, but while he created the Department of Health he failed to introduce a national program. During the Great Depression, calls for a public health system were widespread. Doctors who had long feared such an idea reconsidered hoping a government system could provide some stability as the depression had badly affected the medical community. However, governments had little money to enact the idea. In 1935, the United Farmers of Alberta passed a bill creating a provincial insurance program, but they lost office later, the year and the Social Credit Party scrapped the plan due to the financial situation in the province. The next year a health insurance bill passed in British Columbia, but its implementation was halted over objections from doctors and it was not until 1946 that the first Canadian province introduced near-universal health coverage.